So today's presentation is Access Equity Agency and Innovation Supporting OER in L2 Writing Courses. And your presenters are Emilia Iana Mahikis from Cornell University and Antonio Alandro Perez Belda from the University of Maryland. So welcome. And I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. So All I right. think. I mean, do you want to go ahead and share our slides? Yes, um, true. Mm -hmm. All right, you can see now the presentation? Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome everyone and good afternoon. Uh, my name is Alejandro Perez and uh, I am a former doctoral student from the University of Iowa. Uh, I spent a few years uh, in Iowa, uh, in Iowa City and also previously working in West Liberty. So um, and I, I, I'm very pleased to be here with you today. Uh, currently, I am a faculty member at the University of Maryland, uh, where I coordinate uh, the world languages and dual language programs at the College of Education. And I'm going to let my colleague, uh, Dr. Emilia Yana, introduce herself. So, Emmy. Yes, so I'm a lecturer. Uh, I teach Spanish at Cornell University. I've been here for, this is my third year, I believe. So I'm, I've been through here for three years and I completed my PhD in second language acquisition at the University of Iowa as well. So the two of us have been for quite an amount of time in, in Iowa City, yeah. And so, okay. Um, so our presentation will, the title of our presentation is Access, Equity, Agency and Innovation, Supporting OER in L2 Writing Courses. So we'll be talking about uh, second language writing, but you can apply, you know, we can apply this to other writing courses as well. Um, so we'll start with a small warm up discussion based on the following questions. And the first question is really broad, uh, focuses on your motivation or your expectation for coming to this session. The second question refers to your past experiences teaching writing. Uh, again, it can be teaching writing in a foreign language or it can be teaching writing in English or any, yeah, or any other areas. Uh, and the third question is more specific about OER and um, again, about uh, any course that uh, is related to writing. We'll give you about five minutes to discuss this, these questions in breakout rooms, and then we'll share some of your thoughts and then keep going with the presentation. So that's and, Caleb, right? And I am right now uh, posting the questions also in the chat, just so that you have access mm -hmm. uh, to these questions. So I'm yeah. doing it uh, as I speak. One question. It looks like uh, we are all back in the main room. Uh, thank you. Uh, if you just uh, joined uh, the presentation, we were having a little uh, activity to warm up uh, the questions that you can see right now uh, in the slide that is being shared with you are the questions that uh, we were trying to address. So um, before we move on, uh, we would like to hear some thoughts or some ideas that came up in your conversation. Who would who like to share? any of the answers that came up. Well, I can start off. Um, mm -hmm. uh, basically, I'm, I'm a, a beginner to OERs and um, I teach communication classes at Kirkwood and the Sea Rapids campus. And even though our textbooks are relatively inexpensive, you know, $125 compared to a anatomy and physiology textbook, if I can try to, um, minimize my uh, students at dead load, you know, uh, as part of my goal. So I'm just absorbing and learning from all of you. But uh, so this is my first semester uh, working on it. Awesome. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's the idea that we can all share and we can all try to um, get to use the resources that are available out there for us and uh, minimize the Economical impact, right? So um, thank you for sharing, Arthur. Um, anyone else would like to share anything about uh, your reason to be here? 
Um, so I think for me as a librarian who doesn't teach, um, but as our college is, is getting into the OER experience, I wanna just make sure that we're mindful of the different uh, ways in which uh, the OERs might be accessed in terms of language, accessibility, pronouns, um, you know, I, I just wanna make sure because all of these things are kind of creator or user uh, maintained that we put into policy right from the get-go, the maintenance and the reviews and, and um, uh, set it up correctly so we don't end up in the weeds. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, how to navigate and how to share resources is uh, is something that we need to, to do very intentionally. Emmy, do you want to add anything or do you want us to move on just for sake of time? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah. And you're muted, Emmy. Still muted. <laughs> Oh, um, Emilia, you are muted, but uh, I'm going to continue with uh, slide number three. So uh, the rationale for this project uh, is the critical need uh, to supplement the curriculum that has been traditionally used in second language writing courses. So both Emilia and I had the opportunity to teach uh, Spanish writing courses at the University of Iowa. In the Spanish writing courses that we taught, we mostly had uh, second language learners. Uh, usually native speakers of English, but we often had Spanish heritage language learners as well in our classrooms, just so that you can have an idea of uh, our student population. In any case, we used a book that was focused on four modalities, description, narration, and uh, narrative essays, exposition, and position papers. Now, the scope of the curriculum was especially heavy on reading, on grammar, and writing as a product. The book included required components or elements according to each modality, but we noticed it provided little scaffolding opportunities for our students. And I would say more importantly, writing was not presented as a process. It was presented as a product. So I, I'm gonna continue. Uh, I think it's uh, now Emilia's turn to continue. Yeah, I can move to you now. One, yeah. So um, exactly, writing was, uh, we, we saw that writing was more a product and not a process. Uh, so we decided to enhance the original curriculum. We respected the sequence and scope provided by the textbook. And the new complementary resources included handouts to better guide students' writing processes, peer review training sessions, and rubrics. These three were always connected and they were systematically presented to students as conforming the overall writing process. That means that writing is not just the act of writing, but it's also planning, it's also seeing how your writing is perceived by others, and then making the necessary additions to improve and better meet the assessment criteria. So briefly the, describing each of these three steps, each modality that Alejandro mentioned before had a different writing plan. And this, dry, dry, this writing plan detailed the main elements of their essay and how to approach the writing activities, first as an outline and then as a, as a draft version. Then in step number two, during the peer review sessions, students exchanged their essays and received in-class training that familiarized them with the peer review guidelines, as well as with a variety of peer review platforms, including Kaizena, Peermark, and Peerceptive. And feel free to ask questions in the Q&A if, you if you're interested in these platforms. And finally, in step three, we created a customized rubric for each of the, of the modality, linking the specification in the, writing, in, the, in the writing plan with the criteria in the peer review guidelines and the target grammar forms studied in the particular chapter of the book. This way, we designed an evaluation system that approach writing both as a process and as a product. And then grounded uh, on the expertise and experience of faculty at the Spanish and Portuguese department at the University of Iowa, an informal professional learning community was started. We realized that there were many semester worth of work, which increased the quality of the materials that we already were already available to us to start with. 
We also realized that there were many materials that instructors kept adjusting and modifying, often creating many alternative versions of the original resources. And then new instructors will learn quickly the need to complement the textbook with additional resources. So for instance, when an instructor like me or Alejandro, right, uh, were assigned to teach the writing course for the first time, we will be given uh, samples of syllabus. So the colleagues will share the syllabus with us. And we realized that these syllabus always included additional assignments. This will lead to many, if not everyone, uh, to ask about these resources. And generally, generally, especially in Iowa, right, there wasn't any issue sharing any of uh, any of these materials. Um, so that's what that's the community that we had uh, in the department. And uh, maybe now I can address uh, why it was Emilia and I, the ones doing this, this work. So the opportunity came up when we were informed about uh, the open educational resources uh, scholarships that were going to be available uh, at the University of Iowa for faculty. Uh, you know, a door just opened. <laughs> So Emilia took the lead and worked on a proposal that was uh, accepted. And then we both collaborated uh, to successfully implement the project and ultimately to make our resources available for everyone. In fact, um, you know, having these resources available for everyone was a necessity at the department level. As Emilia just said, in most cases, new instructors uh, would quickly realize that uh, supplemental materials were needed when they were teaching those Spanish writing courses and probably in other languages, it did happen as well. Uh, so because of that, we thought this, uh, um, this OER project uh, would be a great way to merge and to combine resources that uh, were being designed, uh, implemented, revised, recycled by different instructors and researchers at the University of Iowa. It was also an intentional move to preserve resources, specifically designed and implemented with the goal of teaching Spanish writing skills as a process. As I did mention earlier, we wanted to focus on the process of writing rather than on the product of writing. But also uh, we focused on assessing the product with a reliable and consistent system. And that's where the grading system that we created uh, is also uh, important to notice. Therefore, Emilia and I focused uh, on the curricular structure that was already offered by the textbook that we were using in the writing course. And we tried to use the resources and methods used by other faculty in the Spanish and Portuguese department strategically to improve the structure of the course. So, and, and you know, this was of course possible just yes, because of the fortunate overlap of uh, both uh, research interests that Emilia and I share. Um, we both are interested in multilingual education and in second language teaching and learning. And then we have different areas of specialization. Uh, Emilia uh, specializes in second language writing. I specialize in language assessment. So it was just, you know, a good, uh, a good fit for us. Um, yeah, it worked out and uh, just a clarification here uh, that um, as for our particular context or position, we were teaching assistants at that time, uh, which makes it a little complicated no? or sensitive because it was not in our place to make decisions as for what to include, what to leave out, what to adjust, what version should be included in this OER website. Um, however, as Alejandro mentioned, there were many doors open that's you know the reason for this image there were many doors open for the project and a big motivation uh, from the university of iowa to sponsor oer projects and i think in the end was more like oh, why not um if yeah, why not us right uh, if anything new instructors could benefit from consulting these materials right and uh, is there anything you want to add alejandro no, I think uh, so that can... was our position. And so we just went ahead and even as a TA, teaching assistant, we decided to collect all this in, in our website. Um, so I'll move on to the next one. Uh, and the reasons for uh, 
the reasons for doing this OER are based on the principles of OER, which are these four. So access, uh, we improved the access because the resources became free and ready, readily available to both students and instructors. Yeah, and also equity, uh, creating a, how would I say, a systematic protocol for teaching and learning with a book and with supplemental materials available. And also maintaining consistency and interreliability in the grading process. So, you know, in other words, it's fair for all instructors to have access to the knowledge and to the resources that were previously used in writing courses. And I think it is, we think that it's also fair for students in different sections, in different years within our program to be assessed within a consistent and reliable system. And it also comes, uh, to the notion of agency, which is the third uh, principle. And when, when we mention agency, we mean that uh, we wanted to continue using and adapting the materials, even after leaving the, the institution, like we both did. Uh, that is actually one of the goals uh, that the resources that we have created or we have put together for, for this project can be transferred to the particularities of uh, other second language writing contexts. And as Emilia said, to writing contexts in general, it doesn't need to be specific for second language, although the grading system is a little bit more, um, you know, um, is fit for that specific purpose. But it's, there are many things that can be trans, uh, transferred to other educational settings. And then we also have the component of innovation. And uh, this refers that to the fact that we optimized and made the most of the technological resources available. First, we posted the materials to the internet, making them available to other instructors outside of Iowa. And second, in our particular class setting, we also gave students technological training in the different peer review map platforms. Um, so because the different peer review platforms were different from one another, they also emphasized the different aspects of, of writing. So when we kind of tested the three different platforms, there are many out there. And depending on what you want to emphasize in your writing, you will be more interested in one or another. So that was another thing that we tried to innovate a little bit. All right, and so then uh, I'm going to introduce here the, the project uh, for workshopping where we did this OER, right, including which included follow the principles of workshopping. So complementing the textbook, the, which had reading assignments, grammar explanation, and some writing tips, we designed additional resources that aligned and expanded each modality from the textbook. As mentioned earlier, the new resources unpacked the different steps involved in the writing process and aim to better guide students in constructing their essays. This approach to writing, which we in Spanish, we call it talleres, um, is presented in the introduction section of the website. So you will be seeing that. To be clear, the introduction is just an overview of what principles of workshopping and peer review in training means, right? Which is a similar a translation of talleres. Uh, is workshopping and peer review training. Then uh, there are four other entries that you will see on the website as well. And uh, these are included in the top bar menu and each contains the specific resources that pertain to each modality. Again, this model, the four modalities are description, narration, exposition, and argumentation. And while the resources differ from one modality to another, each of the four entries follow a similar structure. So for each module, in the textbook, the added materials included instructions, detailed writing plan, peer review guidelines, and rubrics. So uh, these four steps are systematically appearing in each of the four modalities for description, narration, exposition, and argumentation. Alejandro can open uh, the website uh, in the next slide. Uh, he can open he can open it for us and maybe show this to us a little bit. So I'm gonna share my screen now for a second, Amy. Yeah, I will stop and that's the link, but we'll be sharing it with uh -huh. you too. Go ahead. So we are gonna see now the basic course uh, dynamics, uh, all the different components that Emilia was talking about, uh, the peer review training, the idea of workshopping and the final assessment and how they look in the website. So let's take a let's take a look on, on one of the modules, for instance. So let me see. This is how, how it looks like when you enter the website. And uh, then 
because this is a, a Spanish uh, course, we have uh, set uh, the course in Spanish, but uh, maybe we can work uh, as a follow-up pro project in doing this also in English uh, for convenience of uh, other uh, speakers and for expanding the availability and the use of uh, these resources. But in any ways, if you go, uh, we are in home right now. Uh, in the first one, if I click here in Talleres and Technic e Technicas, we have a, a brief description. And here you can have a, what we call a formation inicial, which is like a, a, an initial training for, a stu uh, for a students. And actually it's for instructors to use with their students, right? And then uh, some uh, supplemental materials. So those two uh, and all the different uh, documents that we have uploaded uh, for your convenience, uh, can be found by clicking in the link and then you will download the document. And then what I'm gonna do now is to focus specifically in one of the modules. Um, do you have a preference, Emi? Shall I do? No, not really. Let's do la description, which is- But before, really before you go to the to the models, just a uh, clarification, right? The, the top part is the talleres, is mm -hmm. the what meets workshop and the bottom is everything about peer reviewing. Yeah, talleres means it's, yeah, as Alejandro said, it's many things are in Spanish, but many of the documents attached are in English and the peer review ones are in English as well. Mm -hmm. So, and right. then just the, probably the most complete is the narration, the, mm -hmm. the narration part. Mm -hmm. So for instance, yeah, if, go if I go for the second workshop, which is uh, the narration, we have here a brief uh, description. And uh, you could access the documents from here. So you click here. You will see that we have divided uh, the module of uh, narration in different components, in different parts. The first one would be the directions, right? So I'm gonna just click and download the document just so that you can see, oh, but I'm seeing I'm gonna need to share my whole desk. So let me share again. That you can see everything. Just so that you have an idea of what to find. So we would have here an introduction for our students. Uh, we would have also some directions for them. Also um, a tentative uh, calendar to that you will need to complete when they need to submit different uh, parts of the task. And, um, you know, you would uh, read uh, through this and you would use what you think is more appropriate for your specific context. And then I get back to the website and you're going to have time to play with this. Uh, I'm just showing to you so that you have an idea of how to navigate. So we will have here directions. Then the second part of uh, each module would be uh, resources. And again, you could click. Uh, over here and download uh, the document with all the information. Then the materials that are uh, associated with the draft that they need uh, to work on and eventually the cyclical process of uh, workshopping and review with the peer review guidelines included as well. And finally, we have uh, a practice for feedback. So all the documents are over here. A brief description in Spanish is provided. And um, my bad, that wasn't the last document. The last document would be the reflection and the accountability paragraph where students usually reflect on the, the entire process of uh, engaging with the workshop of uh, and the process of uh, writing for that specific modality that we are addressing. And then uh, this is for this is something that you will share with your students as well, because we believe that it's uh, quite important to share expectations and to let the students know how they are going to be evaluated for the final product, right? So the previous ones were very much focused on the process. And this last one is a rubric for you to um, assess your students. All the documents I have to say are in, or most of them are in uh, uh, Microsoft Word uh, files just because we wanna let you 
have the opportunity to change, adjust, modify things as needed. We, the idea is that you can transfer um, the framework perhaps, or the resources that we are uh, sharing with you, but you can also uh, adapt those resources for your unique specific educational context, right? Mm -hmm. So anyways, I don't wanna go one by one, but uh, as I did mention, we are gonna let you play with it for a little bit in a breakout room. And uh, then you can have a conversation with your, um, with other participants and eventually we can get back all together and have a, an open discussion. All right. Alejandro, you wanna go ahead and share? Cause uh, I just realized it's 2.45 in yeah, our time yeah, I that too. So, gonna... <laughs> so i think we can just jump to like final benefits or final thoughts for in and how we benefited for instructors and students and that will be it yeah so you want to go ahead and talk about the benefits uh, that we found when we were implementing yeah so um these are some of the benefits that uh, that we had and we this project allowed more emphasis on the process of writing as opposed to on the products of writing. Students were provided provided with a step by step writing plan that guided uh, their uh, their essays and they appreciated that the instructors instructions were clearer. The important criteria was highlighted in the peer review guidelines and the assessment criteria was aligned with both the guidelines and the instructions. And then students perceived training to develop a, a received peer review training. So that helped them write richer and more helpful feedback to their to their to their peers. And uh, regarding uh, the assessment piece, uh, we noticed that students uh, were assessed uh, using objective, consistent and reliable grading methods, which wasn't the case always uh, with uh, other materials. Um, and also from the instructor perspective, I would say the assignments uh, from these materials, they were also a lot easier to grade because the, ru the rubric criteria that we created were very clear and very specific. And I was mentioning in the breakout room that uh, those criteria included in the rubric, they can be modified depending on what are the goals of uh, your curriculum, right? So you will need to find that alignment between what is it that you are teaching and that you are um, prioritizing and the specific parts of the rubric. But for us, it worked very well for instructors. And, you know, interreliability, you want, you have different sections, uh, the program is big and you want everyone to be great in the same way. It's important to have this type of uh, rubrics in your program. And so the other thing that was also beneficial is that, uh, you know, students were able to work with uh, minimal assistance from the instructor once they went through the process and the training. So the initial uh, weeks, they were intense and so there were a lot of uh, exchange of information and a lot of uh, training from, from the instructor, from the teacher, but then the students were able to actually engage uh, with the process of writing uh, independently and working uh, with pairs. And also with the platform that we were using. And finally, something that I would emphasize and maybe we can uh, close with this one, is uh, the opportunities for learning by reviewing that were possible through the methodology of learning through workshops. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that's it. Um, I think we have one more slide, but I know that we are <laughs> already yeah. late, so. um, A final thought that I will probably say is that how that we can ask a question, but I will just leave it for you to think, right? How can we compile the projects, these projects or projects alike in to facilitate sharing? Because this is very small and this, and it's not our intention to like promote it. I mean, not really, but I'm sure there are many other small projects like this. How can we compile them and how can we share them, right? And give voice to these small projects. And so just something to think about. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you, everyone. Um, I think we can close with, our, with, with that. And um, thanks for coming. Thank, yeah. thank, thank you both so much. This was, this was wonderful and, and love to see your product. Um, we, if, if we have maybe one minute left, if you could give one piece of advice to folks who might be thinking about doing an OER, what mm -hmm. would it be? Would you do it again? Oh, yeah. 
Um, mm -hmm. I, I think uh, we all have, uh, there are always things that we want to, and I was talking in the breakout room also, Linda already left, but she was saying, you know, uh, I feel like I should share also what I'm doing. Uh, so, you know, there are always opportunities to share what we are already doing and implementing in the classroom. And sometimes we don't find the channels or the, or the ways to do it. And I think the OER is a wonderful opportunity. So I don't know, yes. I don't know if this is an advice or, or I'm just embracing Yeah, I would also <laughs> say start small. I don't think, I think sometimes we get overwhelmed with the, wow, I have to create a website and it doesn't have to be anything super big. This was very small, like really, it really was. And then we kind of start putting more and more and more and it be, it's still small, but it doesn't have to be super huge and big to create an OER. Uh, and then when we realized how easy it was to use the platform, we were like, wow, this is like, this is already pretty much done for you. You just have to like drag and drop. <laughs> so um, that was surprisingly easy using Wix.com. And there are so many other, you know, so many other platforms mm -hmm. out there that are already, you don't have to code everything. I mean, coding, I actually took a coding um, course after the OER because I thought like I want to be able to do it myself and it's so hard that I think I will just stick to something out to a platform like this that it's already ready for you so it's so it's very friend, friendly very user friendly right so I will stick to what is already done for you and to start small yeah I think that's a wonderful place to uh to, to leave us is, is the idea of starting small. I know that theme has kind of been carried out in several of the sessions that I've that I've been in, that don't be afraid to start small. You don't have to go into this great big, huge thing. Start doing what mm -hmm. you're kind of already doing, right? And sure. begin to share. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you both so much. This is wonderful. Uh, we've enjoyed it. It's been great to get to know you and to see your material and to hear your insights. So thank you so much. Thank you everyone. Yeah. You're welcome. And uh, the next session begins here in about uh, eight or nine minutes. So uh, we'll see you soon, hopefully. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.